Welcome to our inaugural episode of Season 3 of Take 5 Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This season is all about our industry advisory group. Each week, an IAG peer will join us to chat about their work and efforts in supporting our mission. This week, OBO's Director of Cultural Heritage, Tobin Tracy, is chatting with Reed Nelson, Acting Executive Director of the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, also known as the ACHP. As Acting Executive Director, Reed provides executive oversight and budget control for the entire agency. Leading up to this position, Reed worked at the ACHP for three years as an Assistant Director in the Office of Federal Agency Programs in charge of the Federal Property Management Section. Prior to coming to the ACHP, he worked with the Navajo Nation and its Archaeology and Historic Preservation Departments for 18 years, the last nine of which were as a program manager. Reed has also carried out additional archaeological and ethnographic research across the Western United States. Tobin Tracy is a historical architect with 30 years of experience in both private and public sector work the first 20 years of which Tobin spent in New England where he worked with private homeowners, cultural institutions and organizations, and municipalities on everything from documentation of historic structures to complete restorations. Tobin worked for the National Park Service for 10 years as the Assistant Director for Design and Construction with the Office of the National Park Service Liaison to the White House and helped oversee all construction work as well as the conservation and preservation of the building and grounds. Tobin became Director of the Office of Cultural Heritage at OBO in 2015. We're very excited to have them both with us today. Welcome. Hi, Reed. It's uh, nice to meet you. Hi, Tobin. Good to see you. It, it's interesting um, how we've both been in the preservation field for, uh, uh, at least in Washington, D.C., for almost 15 years, and we've never really met before. True, true. It's a remarkably big field. There are a lot of folks in different parts of the historic preservation process throughout the government, throughout states and tribes and others. It's a really quite a big field. And I think it's a field that probably very few people outside of government know much about. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And it, it is a big field, but in a lot of ways, I feel like it's a small field too. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled that you uh, are part of the uh, Overseas Buildings Operations Industry Advisory Group, and um, I'm uh, excited to be able to talk with you today. Um, so I wanted to just start off and ask you, what, what really drew you to the field of historic preservation? Oh, I've been fascinated by historic preservation since uh, you know, my earliest days. I, I think I really, as a kid, was interested in human evolution and history and uh, went to you know, undergraduate and graduate school and ended up studying archeology, span which I just love doing. My first job in archeology span was with the Navajo Nation, a, a sovereign Native American tribe in the Southwest US. And I think really doing archeology span there uh, for the Navajo people, um, you know, really helped me learn that I was interested not just in archaeology, but also in living diverse cultures that were present on the landscape now, and that I enjoyed that just as much as I enjoyed studying archaeological remains. And I think in a lot of ways, uh, maybe even more importantly, my work there taught me that we really have to live in harmony with the remains of history that are all around us, and that history teaches us who we are today and that we've got to protect it. So I think it was at that point uh, during my employment with the Navajo Nation that I really became a historic preservationist, someone who appreciates and understands the role of historic places in our lives and also understands the need for modern development and is interested in helping people find a balance between development and historic preservation. Yeah, that's interesting. I, my path was sort of the same way, except that I started out in architecture, but, you know, early on, I wanted to be an architect. And then as I got into it, I realized the, uh, the importance of history and the stories and, and how much our past guides our future. And uh, we do want to respect it and, and uh, remember it, but we do want to modernize as well and, and move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
What, what part of the uh, industry advisory group's mission most interests you or informed your decision to join? That's kind of a loaded question because I think uh, ACHP has a, a set seat on it, so maybe you didn't have a choice. But Well, listen, I, I was intrigued by the opportunity, and, and I really think that um, you know the, the fact that you all work, the OBO works on expanding America's physical presence in other countries raises a lot of really interesting questions. How do you build something that conveys American values, but also recognizes and honors the local architectural and cultural norms that it must exist alongside? Um, how do you engage that host country in such a discussion? Understanding their views is really important. And, and lastly, how do you ensure that the construction of such facilities don't, does not harm historic places of value to the host nation and that the new construction is compatible with that that surrounds it. I think those are central questions to historic preservation. And I think they're central questions to OBO. Um, and, and frankly, getting to think about historic preservation outside the confines of the 57 states and territories of the United States is also really intriguing to me. Uh, my work right now with the Advisory Council is uh, you know, principally about overseeing a federal regulation that applies to federal agencies uh, when they're acting largely within the 57 states and territories of the United States. And so that's certainly an expansive area that I love working in, but I think really being part of OBO um, increases that to sort of a global perspective, if you will. So. So I, I really thought it was an intriguing uh, way to sort of find out what was going on in other countries. And, and I think maybe also just um, taking what, what I know and the practices and experiences that I have working here in the United States and seeing how they might uh, translate to or inform uh, what happens in other countries. Yeah, and I think OBO is, is really an interesting place because we, we have a, a wonderful group of architects um, around the country that we work with, um, mostly focused on new design, um, but all of our work does take into account those uh, cultural histories and backgrounds in the countries where we're working. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it's looking at historic preservation almost from a different aspect uh, right. a lot of the times. It's not just looking at old buildings or uh, historic sites, but it's really incorporating in that, that culture. Um, well, I, I think you're right. I, you know, I, I think a lot of people think that historic preservation focuses solely on saving the past and right. you know, sort of do no harm. But, but I think there's also a really important part of historic preservation that's focused on new development and making sure that to the extent is possible that it's compatible with what yeah. surrounds it. And those are important values in historic preservation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, looking back on the people who most impacted your career and growth in the field of historic preservation, what methods did you take to enrich your experience and help you to reach um, the level of leadership you're in today? Well, so two things come to mind. First, uh, I mentioned earlier that I one of my very first jobs in archaeology was with the Navajo Nation. And so I credit the Navajo people themselves and particularly my wife who is a Navajo ethnographer and her mother and the family there uh, with teaching me that people have a living connection with the past and that those connections are vital to the continuity of life. And that when we harm historic places, we can actually harm the life ways of living peoples. I credit them with teaching me really how much historic preservation matters. Um, second, I've spent my entire career in historic preservation advocating two central things. First, you have to talk to people about the connections they have with history. And you really should try to reach agreement with them, particularly when it's their history that you might be affecting on how to honor and protect that history. Second, I think we all have to embrace the views of others. There is no one true history. We ha all have our own relationship with the past, and each of those relationships is valid. So I think embracing those principles has served me well. 
And I think my work in Washington um, has been intriguing as well. And I have approached that by being a problem solver, not a problem creator. Um, and I think the good news is that in the vast, vast majority of circumstances in historic preservation, we can solve the problem. We, we can find a way to promote development with, in harmony with and alongside of historic places, not on top of the historic places. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, in your career, which aspects have intrigued you the most and kept you practicing? Uh, sort of kept well, there's so much. It's hard hard to know where to start. Um, you know, I, I just I think what keeps me going is just seeing how incredibly important historic preservation is to to most people across the country, whether they think of it as historic preservation or not, whether they even know what that term means. Yeah, people tend to find the history in their community around them compelling and important, and it's something they want to protect. Now they also do want to, you know, they want to have new facilities. They want to have good highways and, uh, you know, safe and and warm buildings and and new facilities and and water and electricity and all of those things that we depend on in the modern world. But by and large, people are very supportive of of also finding a way to honor what came before us. So I've always found it fascinating to try to help. Uh, you know, help people reach those goals. I would also just say that to me, it's been intriguing to see how um, our, our stories and our histories have evolved and, and frankly, how they've strengthened as we've engaged more people in telling those stories. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, it's probably true in historic preservation as it is in many disciplines. Historic preservation used to be the story pr primarily of sort of the viewpoints of one dominant culture in the history of this nation and others. And I think as we've worked with the advisory council and, and, and elsewhere to expand that view, to make relevant the viewpoints of others, the descendants of those who live those histories and to honor and acknowledge those histories in the same way with the same you know, commitment has really been really been gratifying. And I think that's part of what keeps me going in the field is just knowing that our understanding of history constantly gets better. I think that you know, the other thing that I would just say is as a leader in policy development and historic preservation policy development in the federal government, I remain really motivated to find ways to help federal agencies uh, both advance their programs, the vital things they do to serve you know, the American people and people uh, across the world and do it in a way that incorporates and brings in historic preservation values early on in the planning process so that the planning process is enriched, not dragged down by, but enriched by a knowledge of what matters. So those things keep me going every day and I love it. Yeah, I, again, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I think it it is the, really the stories of, of the people and, and all the different cultures. And we find that particularly here at OBO working around the world, you know, we're working with all sorts of cultures um, and they, they all have their own individual stories. And, and within those cultures, multiple people um, see things differently and, and uh, bringing that all together, I think uh, to tell the full, full story of a place or uh, uh, an area is really important. Um, and I also agree with you, you know, we talk about sense of place a lot. And I think people have a sense of place and they don't even really realize it. They don't, you know, realize what it is about their community or uh, place that they, they are close to or what makes them love it so much. And that, that that is a part of, that's what historic preservation is. Yeah, ab absolutely. And we, we have found at the advisory council that it's a, a near universal value. Um, yes. it's, it's, it's a value that people bring into uh, just about every conversation about modern development. And it's not really a partisan issue. I mean, it's, it's right. something that Americans of all you know, varieties and types and, and parties uh, recognize as an important value. And, and yeah. so we have found that, uh, you know, that, our, that our work at the advisory council is embraced. Uh, you know, and we recognize also that that as a federal regulator, that we 
you know, that we are sometimes, you know, creating procedures that folks have to go through. But I think as they understand those procedures and recognize the support that the American people have for them, they really find a way to make preservation a win. Yeah, I think they appreciate it much more once they start to understand uh, why the process is there. Yeah. That it's not just to make things difficult for them. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you uh, today, Reed, and um, thank you for taking the time to participate in Take Five Fridays. I look forward to meeting you in person uh, someday. Tobin, the pleasure was mine. I look forward to that day as well. Thank you. All right, take care. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Take Five Friday. We hope you'll join us again next week for a conversation with OBO's Director of External Affairs, Christy Fouché, and Roberts Fedberg, principal at TV Design. See you then.